to the NFL. Tuesday's trade deadline, action packed. So let's give out some grades. Jeffrey Saturday, what grade would you give the Pittsburgh Steelers today? We know how much Greeny loves grades. This is an A for me. How about Mike Williams coming over from the Jets? I like this fit. X receiver for Russell Wilson. He loves to throw the, the moon ball. 50-50 balls. You got a big, wide-range cat catcher for Mike Williams. I like this fit. I'm not saying he's the same player as DK Metcalf, but think about Russell Wilson when he has those type of receivers. Being able to put that ball up. And let's talk about Preston Smith. This will go way undervalued, but the Steelers do a fantastic job of this type of guy. He can be a five technique, a three technique. He can rush. He has great hands. He's a mature veteran. The Steelers make the best use of these kind of guys. A plus, in my opinion, for what the Steelers did. That is a, a remarkably high grade. Good grade. Yeah. Dominique, you have been known to be the harshest grader of anyone I've ever known in my entire except, life. Except for Stephen A's list. Yeah, I, I will talk, that's a different that's one. Hey, that's hey, Harvard. hey my, my contract coming up, man. I got to be, I gotta be <laughs> nice to the right people. Hey, Greeny, what grade do you think? Because I think it's probably. No, I, I think I appreciate the value that you give to Preston Smith because yes. I think that sometimes we, we approach the trade deadline and the draft as if you want to fill holes, but sometimes it's just smart to go all in on what you're good at. It. You're That's not going right. to be you're not going to win a championship by being an average everywhere. So the teams that win championships are the teams that can overpower you in one way or the other. And it's clear that the Steelers are going to win a championship. It's going to be with 50-50 balls down the sideline yep. and that defense dominating, Amen. which they solidified that defense. Is Amen. Mike Williams still that guy? You're a receiver, you are a receiver expert. I, I think Mike Williams is a great fit for what the Pittsburgh Steelers do. Now, I know they were in on the IU. I know they were in on Devontae Adams, and if, if they had made those trades, that would have turned George Pickens from Batman to Robin because right. those two guys would have been number one. With Mike Williams coming in, George Pickens is still your guy, but also it prevents defenses and safeties being able to play over the top to him because you don't want to leave Mike Williams alone one-on-one -on -one down the field. That's right. All right, so that's the Steelers. Kimberly Martin, I come to you next. The Detroit Lions, everybody's favorite in the NFC. What grade would you give their moves? I thought I was giving a really high grade. I was giving them a B-plus for this. I Listen, this is the move they had to make. This was the guy all along that we said they should target. Um, listen, losing Aiden Hutchinson, you're not going to replace him with one guy. I've been in that locker room. I've asked those players the same thing on the defensive line. Everybody says you cannot replace an, uh, an Aiden Hutchinson with one. But this guy, he can go after a quarterback. And this is a strength that they need to keep. Yeah. Is it enough? I guess that's the question. It is. It is. And, and here's to, to uh, Kimberly's point. Hutchins is like a 35% pass rush win rate, which is insane. Zadarius Smith is not that guy. But what he does provide is when Detroit gets you a lead, they can push the pocket. They got big bodies inside that can push the pocket and collapse it. Zadarius Smith is a relentless pass rusher, and you can move him all around against the center, tackles, or guards, and he can make all of them pay. That's what the benefit is, because you got to have a closer. It matters in the NFL to have a closer, and that's what he will provide. Let's go to the Washington Commanders and the moves they made. Dominique Foxworth, what grade do you give them? I give them a B. I think Marshawn Lattimore, uh, at this point, is going to be a great addition to them as they go into the final stretch against receivers like A.J. Brown. Their yeah. secondary, their corners in particular have been struggling and they want to play aggressive tight man coverage Marshawn can still do that and I think they are poised to make some sort of run in the playoffs which is you don't make this acquisition if you're not looking to make a push this year which is exciting and interesting. Kmart are the commanders a legit contender to go deep into the playoffs? Uh, yeah because of that quarterback you got a rookie quarterback who's not playing like a rookie and that was evident even in the preseason when I saw him play and they're like oh he's got the freedom to make checks at the line we trust him to make the right decision with the football. Jaden Daniels has completely changed the, the forecast of this organization. I thought they'd be good. I thought they'd be better than most people had thought. I didn't think they'd be this good, and it is, it is remarkable. Them making this move signals they believe they have a chance to go deep, and you're going to take advantage of that rookie quarterback. And then finally, Hawk, the Dallas Cowboys yesterday towards the tail end of our program. Yeah. Acquiring Jonathan Mingo for a I fourth. I want to see this grade. I, I want to see too. this grade. Yeah. This is going to be exciting. Fuck. I, I give you an incomplete Dallas Cowboys. You <laughs> oh. did not turn in your homework last semester. Boo. You did none of your assignments oh. this semester. Week to week, you refused to show up while the rest of your classmates are clearly trying. It sounds like they get an F in this Yeah. My father and sister are teachers. I don't sister. know why you expect me to pass. That's okay? That's this is, and you turn in a half-assed homework assignment <laughs> like Jonathan Mingo, and you expect me to push you through? No, you're repeating this grade. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> He's repeating You're holding him back? You're holding him back. back. Summer okay, school? So they, I, they, they, he didn't even fail. Okay, I like that better. You're okay. holding him back. Oh, okay. holding him back. The Cowboys said incomplete. Try again. I'll like try, try again next year. I like that. Okay. 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 Next year, when everyone is playing the 2025 NFL season, the Cowboys will still be playing 2024. Well, look, Dak Prescott is headed to the injured reserve list. Jonathan Mingo has been acquired. Everyone in the world is scratching their heads at those two things, including Lewis Riddick and Steph Stephen A. Smith. Oh. He's got 12 receptions for a little over 100 yards and no touchdowns playing for the Carolina Panthers. I'm just so touched. I mean, wow, this is going to be this is a world of difference. This is going to make a world of difference for the Cowboys. I mean, this season is over. It's, 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 it's done, okay? They should be selling. They should tank the rest of the damn season, to be quite honest with you. If Dak is gone for the rest of the year, they're probably going to lose like four to the next five, five to the next six anyway. They're going to be out of it, right? We don't even know who the coach is going to be next year for this team. So who are you building a team for? Why are you acquiring this guy? He's not going to give you any probably real juice this year, especially when he's not working with Dak Prescott. So what are they doing? They must be thinking about down the line, what does this do for our football team a year from now? There's no other way to look at it. So – I don't get it. I mean, yeah. Dan Orlovsky actually on that same special said no team or, or no organization less understands what it actually is or where it actually is right now than the Dallas Cowboys. And this move sort of feels yeah. like he's right. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the compensation for the player, there's reason to be judgmental. But I think this is a reasonable move to make if you're playing for next season. Like they, yeah. Everyone knows, like, what did you guys expect them to do? You want to go spend a bunch of draft picks on a difference maker this year? No, this year's over. So, like, if you are grading them based on how this is going to improve them now, this is foolish. If you look at this about the future, you could still say maybe you don't give up a fourth-round pick considering how easy it is to find receivers in the draft. But you could also say this is someone that they like and believe in that they could get for a fourth-round pick who's still under some level of cost control. So it's not a crazy move. Okay, but, yes, this is why it's a crazy move. Look at what the compensation. DeAndre Hopkins went for a fifth-round pick. It's going to be a long-term solution for them, and neither is Devontae is Adams. Is Jonathan like, Mingo going to no, be a long-term? They so the point is, Dak Prescott with a fourth-round you're pick. Not, you're not looking for Jonathan Mingo to be your A1 going forward. The problem is that the Jonathan Mingo trade happened on the same day that a bunch of other big trades happened, and right. everyone's trying to throw this in there like it's the same thing. No. They're done with this year. Right. They've got Don Jonathan Mingo because they think that maybe he can help them in the future going forward. Yeah. They know they can't win this uh, year. And let me say this about the Cowboys. Self-awareness is a zero, and I get that. But, 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 but the Mingo thing, I'm with you. This is for the future, two right. years, whatever. The issue I have with the Cowboys is this. If Zach Martin's not on your team next year, if Diggs is not on your team next year, if Lawrence is not on your team this year, then you've royally screwed yourself up because you could have moved those guys to teams that needed those positions, and that would have helped you build for the future. Now, if they're all back, tip of the cap to you, right? But you're going to have to go pay Micah Parsons. But those guys, if that's still your nucleus, that's what. That's why I don't think Jerry is self-aware. Because if you're going to have this re – you're bringing Mingo in, are you holding on to all – is this the nucleus of your team? They don't know what the nucleus of their team is. That's a problem. You know what the funniest thing you said is? I don't think Jerry is self-aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? No. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Hawk, you said something interesting today. Yeah. Because Thank you. Because the part of this that <laughs> – I do in my our best. meeting this morning, incomplete. <laughs> people will describe this move as too little, too late for the Cowboys, yeah. and you described it as too much, too early. Yeah, because to, to Nick's point, this is a next year move. This is the first piece for a new regime. I honestly believe that. I think there's going to be a different coach, a different system, new players, and yeah, you should have added pieces to help your receiving core, core earlier. I like Mingo as a player. Mm -hmm. I think he's uh, in Carolina. Everybody has looked terrible over the last couple of years. 6'2", 220, can run, yeah. can change direction. There is potential there, and you have to go get players who are still on rookie deals. That being said, at this point in the year, you probably could have made this move in the offseason. You probably could have addressed some of these issues previously, like in the, in the free agency period when you sat on your hands. That's when the season was lost. The season was right. over at that point yes. when you didn't address the issues that everybody saw that the Cowboys had. Right. All everybody. of the moves together that Jerry has made do not make sense when you look at them through in, in totality. And that is what I haven't yeah. understood about this whole thing. So I made the joke about Jerry not being self-aware. You know, the whole time Jerry is telling us, uh, you know, we have all the pieces. I didn't expect us to be this bad. We've got the guys. Like, what, what's the end game? 
And I thought not paying Dak and CD was about, you know, they need to have money for guys in the future. And I'm just trying to figure out how all these pieces fit. Why get a receiver when you think that you might have a new head coach next year? Like, why even bother doing that? Like, no, I, 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 but, but as far as what, the fourth, there will no, be pick. no right. more talented Wide receivers. You're, you're just, right. You have an opportunity to get someone that you think is talented. I guess so. Mm-hmm. On, on my show, we play a game called Make It Make Sense. When people do things that are silly, you have to challenge yourself to make it make sense. And this, I could see this as the first move, as you said, moving forward. Yep. This is a very talented receiver yes. who could be a diamond in the rough in a bad situation that they got for a fourth round pick. And to say that we should, they should wait till the off season to start planning for next year would be making a similar mistake that they've been making up until this point. Is putting off all. All the things that they need to do until it's too late. Grab a guy that you think can be talented for a, a, a low risk situation. I think that's. Smart. But when you do that, they should be selling at the. Se- that's what I'm it. saying. If it, feel, selling, it feels yeah. like they are going so for right. it. I, I, you and I believe right. that maybe this is a great move for their future. I don't think that's why they did it. I think they did it to try <laughs> and stay afloat. Okay, this okay. Year. okay. <laughs> if, that, if they think that Dak on IR and Jonathan Mingo, yeah. I mean, by no disrespect to Jonathan Mingo, very good player. Sounds I think good. Jonathan Mingo doesn't think that he's coming in there. To <laughs> Say no. their season. No, no one thinks that except no. Jared. Yeah, yeah. like nobody Cooper thinks that. Rush and they all know they're building towards the future.